Welcome to the second episode of our Delta Green series, everyone. On today's episode, we get to finish up our characters and see what sort of doomed team of folks we have to come up with. But before we get to that, here's what you can hear in the call to action after the show. We just got a new patron this week, mm. so expect a brand new name in the list of our patron thank yous. There's also a Kickstarter going on right now for Rebels of the Outlaw Wastes RPG by Michael Addison and Banana Chan, which we showcased a couple weeks ago on our last Spotlight episode. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be doing the normal podcast episode wrap-up stuff. Uh, no new reviews to read this week, but maybe next time. Maybe next time. Finally, uh, we'll have just a little reminder about our upcoming move to Megaphone uh, with the One Shot Podcast Network that is in the works. And I think that's about it. In the meantime, thanks so much for listening, everyone. Enjoy the show. Last episode of Character Creation Cast. We all rolled our attributes for our characters, and we were just about to start selecting our jobs. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Gosh. And I like that it does like give you recommended stats. Uh -huh. Like mm -hmm. also, sometimes it's fun to like not do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like these ones that are based on dexterity, like. It could be a pilot, but oh no, <laughs> building a new profession mm, that sounds hard. There's a lot of math there. I think I'm gonna play a doctor. I, I, no, yeah, I never, I never, I like, I generally, I don't ever play, I generally don't play smart people. Um, because but you don't have to play them, so yeah, I don't have to play mm -hmm. them. And like, you know, I, I sort of generally like. Either lean towards like cool, cool assassins or like Kimbo's. Um, and you know, you do, you really do. Okay. So, yeah, um, when, yeah, you will place at, uh, put in, it's going to like give you stats to start with certain skills. So, like, physician, like, I've got bureaucracy of 50%, so I'll just write in 50 there. All right. Um, I'm going to be a media specialist. Cool. A local TV news anchor, to be precise. So then we just go down the list of the professional skills and, and put in those percentages. Yeah. Um, and then choose the ones that they tell you to choose. Yep. Um, okay. For forensics. What is this hum int skill? Um, so human intelligence, that is what it stands uh, for. Um. Let me let me give you like the, the definition. But human intelligence is basically um how you obtain stuff through like it's basically beating people. Okay. But like if you're trying to figure out if somebody's like lying to you, you'd use human intelligence to like read their body language, try to like recognize clues, or like, you know, try to make sure or like it, it, try to determine the veracity of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, it's studying people. Okay. I think I'm gonna. Put, I've got a free science skill that I can toss in here. Um, oh yeah. I think I'm gonna go with genetics because that's weird. And now let's do chemistry because chemistry is boom and fun. Mm -hmm. Is there a list of like uh, suggested skills and like sub skills for these, like the science and yeah? Whatnot? So on page. Uh, da -da -da, a little bit there's a list of all this so um on page 34 there's the list of science types and like the mm. uh and generally it's like just any general field that you can think of so like astronomy biology botany st like big overarching fields like that is generally what the science stuff is for um okay. 
There's also, I believe, the other one that is like a big overarching skill is craft, which is generally anything that you, uh, any, any, perf- anything that would be its own profession, but would be like way too specific for a role playing game. Mm. So architect, carpenter, electrician, that sort of stuff, it looks like. Even microelectronics, that's interesting. Yeah, because who knows? Maybe somebody put it, maybe, he's, maybe somebody's putting uh, alien language symbols on microcircuits. Mm hmm. You know, Billy, what was the profession you picked? Um, Are you still? I'm looking at, I'm looking at special operator, but I want it to be something like obscure. Um, so when you're, when you're talking obscure, um, do you want to be military or do you want to be like related to some law enforcement agency? Yeah. I mean, I think I want it to be some like law enforcement uh, government agency so, thing. So like I'm looking down at like in that like federal agency. Yeah. Like, that, like it's in a, it, so there's like, yeah, there's like the FBI has like their, their own like version of the tackle tactical teams. Um, yeah, there's another book, which is like the ATF, which has their, like, even weirder, hardcore version of that. Mm. This is a game made by people who... Border protection. It's a game made by people who have spent way too many times on, like, staying to a time looking at org charts of federal agencies. (laughs) Yeah. Like, what if I make up my own? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to decide between anthropology and archaeology for my final skill selection. I think I'm leaning anthropology. Okay, yeah. Anthropology is like, it's going to give you a more, I'd say, like, modern usage. But, mm-hmm. but archaeology, obviously, especially because mythos stuff has been around longer than the human race. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to, either one's going to use. Okay. So I picked my skills, uh, and then it said bonds was four. So you're going to get to create mine. four bonds. So you're going to create, and you're going to create four additional people. You just give them a name and, like, a relationship. Um, okay. So, yeah, um, e- and each is going to have a score, which is equal to your charisma. Okay. Uh, Honestly, I think I might go historian. Cool, cool. Do I get any additional bonds with like a high charisma or nope is it it's just, just these four yeah it's just those four it, they are going to be pretty strong because you've got a high charisma okay. um but yeah it's just you've got those four because it's uh it's basically the the formula they have for building professions is basically the more skill points you get the less bonds you get mm. so like when you have incredibly hyper specialized fairly capable characters they have like two bonds okay makes sense now do these bonds have to be npcs or can they be pc bonds i believe the start um let me let me i mean i feel like you'd want them to be npc because you don't want to like take my say you can't have my (laughs) i was trying to remember how this goes yeah so to start with they are going to be um they are going to be npcs but as okay. we as we play through the game, because we because ideally we are going to be a group that is going to be collectively traumatized. Um, mm-hmm. There will eventually like there is mechanics for basically that you are create that um, you transfer some of that into you just create a bond for your team or the Delta Green organization as a whole. Like you're basically replacing. You're replacing your connection with outside people to your devotion to the idea of Delta Green. Okay. Uh, which is a fun way of sort of mechanicalizing how toxic, how, how this sort of toxic, like, conspiracy works. Mm-hmm. Basically, really, you know, taking it from you care about your family to you care about your job. Mm-hmm. How many do I get? This three. Um... I get two foreign languages. Ooh. Ooh. I know. What do we think? Abyssal and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so French. <laughs> think Latin. Ooh. Pick 
something useless. Wow. Probably I mean, the most really useful useless. foreign language pick in a game dealing with I know <laughs> cosmic horror. But I wanted to not be helpful to anybody else. You know? That's fine. Uh, well, that just means you can kind of understand a whole bunch of other languages. Right. And then what's something that, like, I would never, ever need? Well, it, I mean, depends on what we do as a group. Oh, if I we're know. If we're getting shipped overseas or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we, we're, we're, we're anthropologists, a doctorate of historia. I feel, yeah. Yeah, I feel like so that we're, we're going to, well, not not an anth- just. I learned anthropology. I'm actually a local TV news anchor. All right, so oh, that's a ju- right. <laughs> so a journalist, a historian, and a doctor. I feel like we're getting yeah, we're getting shipped to weird places, or you know, yeah. Um, I'm on I'm on the scene here in France. <laughs> it's the it's the local uh, Independence Day parade. I don't know what happened. I don't know what they celebrate in other countries, unfortunately. I mean, mo- well, actually, the most celebrated holiday in the entire world is independence from Britain. Yeah. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. And I just know Bastille Day is on my birthday. All right. Yeah. It's not it's not a bad day to, to share a birthday with. Every few years, Thanksgiving's on my birthday. There you go. I'll see. I had a couple, like, I don't think it happens, like, once a, you know, once every decade or so, but Columbus Day will end up being on my birthday. It's, I'm just like, no, thank you. <laughs> Trying to figure out my two other, two two of my four bonds. I've already got my co-anchor and fiancé. I figured that's right for drama. Yeah, yeah I've got, so far, uh, my sister and a colleague who's another doctor. Mm. Hmm. I'll come back to thinking about another language. Hmm. I'm going to go with uh, my dissertation advisor. Okay. Oh, I have my third bond. Okay. Um, who is Sam Hamby. The description for this bond is it's complicated. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, I've got uh, a twin. Uh, I figured that would be fun. Right. Love it. Cool. And uh, my camera person. Cool. I don't know who any of these people are yet, but uh, that'll depend on who this person ends up being. Hmm. Okay, you know what? One is going to be my therapist. <laughs> there are actually rules for going to therapy in this game. Uh, between, between jobs, you have scenes at home, and one of mm. them is basically go to therapy. And with, with part of it being, do you lie to your therapist? All the time. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. I don't want her to think I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> so you're also going to, we're also going to get bonus skills, um, which are basically you get to add 20% to eight skills. You can add it either to a, something you already have written in a number four, or you could just add it to the number in brackets. Mm. So like if you want to add stuff to your athletics, you can just, Put that up to 50% to start off with. Mm. So you just add 20 points to each of those eight skills. Yep. They're based off of the whatever they start with. Or what they were given your... to you by your profession. Oh, wonderful. Also, um, if you don't want to think about it too much, there are uh, a number, uh, well, starting on page 27, there are a number of um, just like very quick things, like packages. That you can take with the only um, with the only caveat being that you can't pump it, that you can't uh, put anything above 80 in character creation. Oh, they can't be too com- competent. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I don't understand what we're doing with these. Oh, uh, which one? With like the, the bonus. Oh, so basically skills. like after you've done your profession stuff, you get to mm-hmm. you get to add 20% to eight skills. Mm-hmm. Even ones that aren't of your profession. Yep. Uh, and then when we wrote down the ones for our profession, I wrote down like what my profession gave me, but I assume that like, does that get added to that like base? Oh, uh, no. For, for the profession, it just replaces it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I did it correctly. But once we're at, but with the bonus ones, yeah, 
adds on to either the existing one or the, the base number. Um, I'm going to take outdoors because I've got a, mm. I, I have a feeling this doctor is, I think I've gone with uh, Doctors Without Borders for like my employer. Okay. Uh, because it seems like we have like sort of an international leading group. I feel like translator would be fun, but it forces me to pick three more foreign languages and I haven't even. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I am not into that. <laughs> And it would also probably make me the most, uh, like, looking at outdoors, it's like, oh, yes, probably is going to make me the most combat competent out of all of us. <laughs> Occult investigator or conspiracy theorist. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there. so one of the interesting things is that there are two skills that are sort of weird, that are, like, weird stuff in this game. There is the occult, which is, like, people running weird cults. And then there is unnatural, which is your actual knowledge, um, is like your actual knowledge of things beyond this world, mm. which starts in zero. And I don't think that you can, well, there's one way you can get uh, percentages of that to start off with. Oh, I have some. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. I got some from my job and I'm about to get more. And it looks like I can increase one more of these. Um, let me see what this one's all about. Yeah, probably that makes sense. Human intelligence. Bump that up to 60. You said it can't go above 80. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can hit 80. So it can be... Okay. Yeah, I got my journalism to 80. My history is 80. Surprise, it's a historian. What? Hey. I feel somewhat competent at some things. Yeah, I'm, I'm very good. Like, I'm very good at being a doctor. Um, hmm in a pinch, I can shoot someone. Yeah, yeah. I, t- I took firearms at uh, 40%. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. I figure if I'm uh, if I'm on the streets, uh, like doing uh, some stories in a dangerous area, it might be beneficial to know how to use a firearm just in case. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. My dexterity is pretty bad, so it's probably safer if I don't. <laughs> Okay, I still need a language and a wand. It's not a bow and arrow, Amelia. Look, my daughter learned how to throw a hatchet, Girl Scouts. Now, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. Hmm. I just want a cool language. How about, like, um, just something that sounds good? I mean, if you're being, like, a translator, French is, pro- like, you know, like, French is going to be pretty common, so it's, like, a safe, uh, safe option. Mm-hmm. I think I want Portuguese. Oh, heck yeah. There you go. One more bond. I'm going to say a local guy that I met in Brazil. <laughs> there is also one more option that, it, or that you can choose to have, um, which if you want to play a more experienced character, is you can mm-hmm. say like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm part of, I'm a veteran of Delta Green. And there are some options for basically how your character um has grown and been traumatized as part of that. Um, so, like, extreme violence lets you add your age as a cult skill. You have to reduce your sanity and your charisma. Um, but you do become adapted to violence, which means that you never have to take a test related to sanity for violence. Huh. That's unsettling. Yeah. There are, there's, there are basically rules for... If you do enough violence or help, like helpless enough, you become accustomed to it, and you know uh, there there's something similar for like uh, helplessness, which is cap- you've been you've been either in captivity or in prison. Um, mm. There is also another one for hard experience, which gives you bonuses to skills, and then there is things man was not meant to know, which is the only way you can get uh, points in unnatural. Um, to start a, as a starting character. Interesting. Which basically is you've seen some real, real spooky stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that because I don't need to I don't need to make this I don't need to make this loser even get any more screwed up. I'm doing that fine yeah. on their own. <laughs> I'm great. So one thing I forgot to do was uh distinguishing features for my stats. Oh yeah. I know I have like four of them. I've got four above twelve and then one below nine. 
Um, I, so my strength was a six. Uh, so my distinguishing feature is small. Okay. S M O L. Uh, small. Because they mm-hmm. tiny. They tiny. <laughs> oh, BB one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for my dexterity, I feel like it's just so clumsy. Also, probably always have food on my shirt. <laughs> Constitution. A good one for that. I went with a strong stomach for my con of 14. I think I was, I want to put, take some multivitamin. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're sold by some like multi level marketing thing, though. And I'm like always trying to get everybody to like get in on this. And for my power, my power is 18. Indomitable will. Mm-hmm. I went with feisty. I just think, like, story and combined with conspiracy theorist that, like, I might be, like, too deep on Reddit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm writing it down. That'd be a good one for charisma of 16 for a TV news anchor. Former theater kid. <laughs> glowing personality yeah i like that one there we go i've got just that just those distinguishing features alone i've got a decent like look into what this person is like mm. it's kind of nice so they got the sample ones on page 19 mm-hmm. i just kind of took those and and modified them a little bit um yeah they're not really required but they do help like i think shape your or like sheep like you're at least your mental image of character. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I have a I have a document somewhere that is literally I think it's a thousand like sort of pre gen characters that you could print out and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they they all have like a, just a random they they all have like random stuff for any like weird ones. But you can even like put stuff for like a ten of like like a ten for charisma could be like completely unremarkable. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So we just finished our skills. Yeah. The, um, and our bonds. The last part of this is going to be that uh, we've got some we've got some uh, wrap ups here, which include um, your name, um, your nationality, um, and any personal details. You're also going to create uh, motivations. Mm. So you can, um, motivations are like, not relate. they're not your bonds, they're not people you have a connection to, but they are, their ideals or reasons you're doing the things you are. Um, you can have up to five personal motivations, um, and you can, you can leave those blank or, or, or really you can come up with those later. Um, but, uh, the idea is that every time that you, um, reach a breaking point, you replace one of those uh, motivations with some sort of trauma. Okay. Start with an A. Maybe nationality first? I don't know. <laughs> I just opened the book randomly. The first name on this page. Ready? Mm-hmm. Secret. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Uh, what's your name? Secret. Well, you can tell me. Oh. Uh, Who's that? Goes with Mary Adler. Mm. He is. I am a sucker, and I will never resist the urge to make a Sherlock Holmes reference. <laughs> Love it. Okay, I've got a first name and a middle initial. I just need a last name. Um, last names are hard. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm going to be playing uh, April Jacobs. Uh, middle a good TV middle name. initial O. Is a uh, TMNT reference in there? Mm-hmm. April O'Neil. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She's I, a TV I'm one anchor. of the guests who's not who's just that registers nothing for me. <laughs> I, it's fine. Um so I got some motivations. Three motivations that I'm coming up with, at least starting this character off, are protecting people, making a better future, and the truth is dangerous. Mm. I can't pick justice as a last name. 
<laughs> secret justice can't be named secret justice <laughs> that, that'd be that's probably like, the that's best name too much it's <laughs> probably the best name ever though no persephone fedora was the best I'm name so, that one is pretty good i don't know secret justice as a normal person name how about uh, illuminata <laughs> <laughs> It might be a little on the nose. I don't know. We could do Illuminata Justice. <laughs> it's in the book. It's in the book. It's a valid name. It's also something people have named their children. And can I can I just hammer that doubt button because of somebody? <laughs> uh, I mean, people have named their kids worse things than Secret Justice. I mean, I could tell you a story about why I have an E in my name, but that's also. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the moral of the story is parents, stop naming your kids weird things. <laughs> this is the person who named their child Olivia with an A. Hey, it's <laughs> true. I'm not good. I want to be invited back to this podcast, so I'm biting my tongue on this. <laughs> I told him not to. I said that child is going to spend the rest of her life having to spell out her name for people and with people getting it wrong. Hey, uh, th the second name on our list, or maybe the third name, was Amelia with an E. See, but that's common. That's like an alternate spelling. Right. I know, I know a lot of Amelias with an E. Right. But that would have been very confusing. I mean, it's it like for us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's a good middle initial for Illuminata Justice? I blank J. Um, L, I L J. I don't. Or or M, because then you could be I am Justice. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, follow up question, Justin. Do you still want to be invited back on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I've got, listen, there There are games on my shelf here that I know you're not going to guess for. <laughs> <laughs> that we can at least kill four hours with. I mean, I've got a lot of those too. But, you know, some of them are really bad. It's fun. Okay. Uh, motivation. Motivations. Yeah. All right. The truth must be known. <laughs> Good one. Uh-huh. Which is interesting because at least the... The mandate of Delta Green is that this stuff is too dangerous for anybody to know about. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like it, it is not like, say, uh, Warehouse 13, where it's like, oh, we're going to pull out this fun gadget to do this. It is this math equation could render reality. We're burning this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think one of mine is going to be never again. Oh, Mysterious. Look, I'm a historian slash conspiracy theorist. I know things. <laughs> hmm. The journey really is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> really glad that that is on sort of like an actual like mi like uh, military thing because none of us should have the ability to rule bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> what are, what are the, oh, I, I do have that. Or at least rule, I've got bureaucracy. Or at least rule bureaucracy with relation to uh, um, any of the military branches. Uh, there are mm -hmm. rules in this game for summoning a cruise missile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I like the fact that none of us are like... Special forces trained. Yeah, we're going to die horribly, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's going to be fun along the way. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll be smart enough to avoid it, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to, my other motivation, I've got it. I'll just do two because I don't want to think more. Uh, I must complete the puzzle. Nice, mm. nice. I've got whatever it takes to get the scoop. I love it. Okay. I did not pick a nationality. Did anybody pick a nationality? I picked American because it's just the easiest. Kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Mm -hmm. There are, there are other countries that have, um, similar organizations to Delta Green, notably uh, the Ru the Soviet Union and then the Russians had SV-8. There is a very fun story in the Delta Green backstory about um, 
the Russians trying to make a zombie Stalin that was immortal. And SEA and Delta Green teamed up to stop that from happening. Mm. Oh, bummer. The Canadians have M Epic, which is a uh, a spinoff of the Mounties. And yes. the British have Pisces, which is an or which is um a organization that is now controlled by alien crabs. Mm. Makes sense. It was bound yeah. to happen. The the recurring theme of Delta Green is that organization with knowledge of the unnatural tries to gain uh tries to gain contact or technology from the unnatural and ends up becoming subverted by it. Mm. Just rolling my birthday right now. You're rolling your birthday? Uh-huh. I'm doing 3D 12 minus 2. No, minus it doesn't matter. <laughs> Close okay. enough. And if I get above the, the date, it, I just reroll. I'd have to find it. June 21st. I'm going to do a D20 and a D10. How about that? Mm. What about one? You can't be born on the 31st. <laughs> or the 1st. July 20th. All right. Ooh. And then with August 6th. I don't know why I chose it, but. 27 years old. It's going to go for like 35. I assume we all have the same employer. Um, so uh, um, the way the way it will generally work is like your your characters will do their jobs for long periods of time before getting called up. So it's like your your mm-hmm. employer is, what did you do when you're not working on a task force for Delta Green? So like, I'm not mm-hmm. MSF as my uh, employer. All right. I, I, my employer, I can't, I don't know exactly where we are in the States. So it's either a W or a K, but. Well, I think uh, you got to decide yeah, that. Yeah, because I mean, the, the important I part mean, of it is that you just get a plane ticket and a briefing and you go somewhere. So that's could be, true. it could be anywhere. Like, we don't all have to be the same yeah. place. I mean, I, I put a W because that's what I'm used to here mm-hmm. in the Midwest. So I said W N W Z is the the station call sign for the local news, news station. Yep. Uh, w News. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now I'm now I'm very curious if that actually exists. It has yeah. to somewhere, right? Oh, it's a radio station. Magic 104.9. Where? Uh, urban contemporary format licensed to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan. There you go. Sorry. I gotta pick a good employer. <laughs> hmm. Are we based out of Michigan then? Um, do you want a fun? Do you want a well, fun one for a historian? Yes. Um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. But um, this is gonna be from one of the Delta Green supplements. Uh, from mm-hmm. the, uh, let me find it. But the Library of Congress has like basically um, special researchers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I'm trying to remember what they're called specifically. Defense, Re- it's called the Defense Research Division, um, which are basically researchers and uh, and people who are just basically specialists within the Library of Congress. Love it, perfect. Okay, did we did we do it? I think that was our characters. Um, yeah, we've got everything here. We don't. We do not need to uh, look at gear because uh, that's just something that happens during scenarios. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, I think we have made uh, some people who are going to uh, maim, kill, or uh, grievously traumatize. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of interesting um, stuff on here. Like I I'm looking at the optional like stuff finishing up mm-hmm. in there, and they've got like. Um, you know, the stuff that we went through, but like also like something you admire about the agent, mm-hmm. something you dislike about the agent. Um, why does Delta Green trust your agent to confront unnatural threats and keep them secret? <laughs> and why does your agent agree to help Delta Green and keep it secret? Mm-hmm. Those are some uh, really interesting questions. There's a box for agent signature. <laughs> yeah. I So, um, because this is an audio meeting, um, uh, the uh, the Delta Green uh, listeners, the Delta Green character, she has the look of a uh, of like a form, 
um, which is something mm-hmm. that I very yeah. much like. Mm-hmm. I, I think that um, more character sheets should strive to to fill the genre that they are in. Um, and like mm-hmm. you yeah. can you can write it like your authorizing officer, which when we've done that, it's the GM, and yeah, and mm-hmm. then making your agent's signature. Now I'm gonna have to. Yeah. It even says, please indicate why this agent was recruited and why the agent agreed to be recruited at the bottom of the sheet. It's interesting. Yeah, typically the way that will end up with like a character is your character was accidentally exposed to something in the unnatural. Mm-hmm. And so they were, and so they would be like, basically what happens is that when somebody gets exposed and they have certain levels of expertise, they get added to like some folder and eventually yeah. get approached okay I yeah it's it. yeah it's very interesting it's a fun way of especially with the sort of mission-based structure of how delta green works of like maybe your character doesn't have a maybe this maybe like a character doesn't really fit within a certain scenario um, mm-hmm. but maybe, that, but it's like, it's easy to write in another character, which I, I find is very like neat, especially if like, maybe your maybe your group doesn't have like a, like rotating, like there's a rotating group people at your table or it's a one shot or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I like this. I, I like the, like the, uh, the additional questions too, that they ask yeah. you there. Um, it kind of makes you think about like, I, I never thought about like, what do I admire about this character and what? don't i admire about this character yeah because it's like you're it's you know you're work, like you know it's if if it was the three of us like we're going to be going into something that is going to be very terrible very stressful you know and so you know you're going to form very strong opinions about the people you're working with for sure mm-hmm. i also just like that question of like why did you agree to be recruited like why you know, why was somebody like want to go do scary stuff? And you're like, yeah, all right. it, it's, it's <laughs> like it's not just assumed that like we're all going on an adventure. Yeah, it's an interesting thing of like, you know, because it really is built off that original question of why do you go into the haunted house? Right. And why do you continue to expose yourself to this when a normal person would should not? Right. Mm-hmm. Who hurt yeah. you? The question. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm wondering, did we want to answer those questions now during character creation or? That's answer- for fanfic, Ryan. Fa- yeah. Fanfic. I think that sounds like a good place to put those. Um, mm-hmm. So it's something to think about mm-hmm. uh, between episodes here. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is really interesting. I've got a good kind of feeling of who this person is from mm-hmm. this. And I'm I'm excited to see what sort of uh, horrifying shenanigans we get up to. Definitely. Same. Definitely. I'm excited. <laughs> Very uh, cool. Justin, thank you so much for joining us for our Delta Green episodes. This was so much fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's been a pleasure. I, I, I'm i very glad to talk about uh, this weird, I'm not going to call it break, this weird, uh, weird on stepchild of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to remind people where they can find you online and what you're up to? Yes. Um, so the places you can find me are on the complete discography. You can find that on Twitter at at two in underscore pod. I do not run that Twitter account. You can also find me at the Babylon Project, which is at Babylon Project. I do run that account. Um, we have been called. You know, we that is a whole other chaos thing. I also write for. I'm going to get the. Um, gatecrashers.fan, which is a pop culture website, uh, designed to help, uh, people break in to, uh, new things to love. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you again, Justin. And thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember what we did. <laughs> it's, fu- it's, it's funny because, like, I thought I had split the episodes at a good equal part. But t- mm-hmm. turns out uh, this this next episode was only 30 some odd minutes uh, compared to the almost an hour from the previous episode. 
uh, because there was a lot of silence of figuring things out here and there. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, there was a lot of skill selection. Like like it was very familiar to our Call of Cthulhu, uh, like mechanics portion of character creation. Yeah, I definitely think picking the skills it was you know it was a familiar concept. the The list of skills were fairly familiar mm -hmm. from having done Call of Cthulhu, um, but it is still trying to choose right? right. And then there were still you know like the the professions and. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of stuff. So I know definitely there were points where we kind of slowed down and just were kind of mumbling to ourselves yep. while we were trying to pick <laughs> things. So, uh, dear listeners, there's a lot that got cut out from this episode. Uh -huh. um, a lot of just and page turning. Yep. Um, as we tried to find the, the perfect combination of skills for each of our, yeah. our characters. It's, it's, but I like how they ended up. Yeah, I they, like what we... It ended up really great. Uh, I really liked figuring out what sort of, like, civilian organization we worked for. Mm -hmm. uh, and and why we kind of ended up in this place is uh, to be determined in the discussion episode, but yeah. like, uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting how it all came together. And, um, I, I really enjoyed, uh, like even figuring out what news station my character was from and just throwing <laughs> out a call sign and finding out it was a real place. And like, are mm -hmm. we, are we really based out of Michigan? What's going on there? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if we ever fully like decided on that. In my brain, we're a Michigan-based thing, and this hip-hop radio station uh, actually uh, does the news as well. Okay. Uh, and it's on TV. <laughs> wow. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on there. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, the discussion next week is fantastic, so uh, definitely join us for that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. But before we let you go for the week, uh, we do have some calls to action. First up, we are currently all out of new reviews to read. Uh, if you go submit one today, it is almost guaranteed that we'll read it on the next cold open. And thank you personally, uh, unless more than one of you submit it, then we'll just keep reading them in order. Uh, but mm -hmm. who's going to get there first? Uh, we'll, it's a race it's now. It's a race now. Uh, <laughs> we'd, we'd absolutely love to hear what you think about the show. Uh, and we do see reviews from all countries on Apple Podcasts, so uh, don't worry about us not being able to see those. Uh, you can also leave reviews on Podcast Addict if you're on Android or Podchaser from pretty much any browser uh, or any device that has a browser. Uh, and every review helps us out and really makes our day whenever we come across a new one. Next up, we have a reminder to check out the Rebels of the Outlaw Waste Kickstarter that started last week. Um, at the time of this recording, it is the day that it launched. Um, they are just over halfway toward their goal. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't listened to our Spotlight episode from last Thursday, except it's not last Thursday, it's two, last two Thursday, Thursday from when ago. we were recording <laughs> <laughs> two Thursdays ago. Um <laughs> If you haven't checked out our Spotlight episode that we put out on, at the end of September, um, you should absolutely check that out and then head over to the Kickstarter page. It was a really fun game, and I think it's something that all of you would enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder, we are going to be moving the show over to the Megaphone service uh, at least as soon as the first three shows on the network move over. They're doing them in batches, so we'll see where we end up in those uh, batch moves. Uh, we'll have more details on how that will look for our show in particular as we get closer to that time. But in the meantime, we just wanted to give you a gentle reminder that there might be some changes coming uh, to help cover the costs of creating the show and the bonus content that we're working on getting out there for all of our patrons. Speaking of Patreon, right now is a great time to join up with ours. Uh, we're going to be adding more frequent content for patrons. We'll continue with early episode releases that will be ad-free um, for any of the later episodes in our backlog. Uh, but we are excited to add some character creation chit-chat content for all of our patrons as well. Uh, which is 10 to 20 minutes of Ryan and I talking about whatever we want. Um, 
for every major episode release. So far, it's just been kind of catching up on life. We've talked about hard drives. We've (laughs) talked about uh, really poor memory. Yeah. Um, Honestly. Ryan's trip to Japan in 2004. It's all been about (laughs) memory. It's fine. Yeah. It's all about memory. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. You're right. Uh, (laughs) uh, It should be a good time overall, though, and we hope you can join us with those. Uh, Just head on over to patreon.com slash character creation cast and see what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. And part of the perks is thanking our patrons. uh, And we have a new patron joining us this month. Uh, So before we get to thanking everyone else, Tentacle Duck, thank you so much for joining up this month. We truly appreciate having you aboard. In addition to Tentacle Duck, which I just really love saying. It is fun. um, In addition to Tentacle Duck joining us, we'd like to take a moment to thank the rest of our patrons. Lieutenant First... First ever patron, first among patrons. <laughs> <laughs> you rock. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, David, aka Tigranosaurus, thank you. Thank you to Eric Bontz. Matt Newton, thanks. Thank you, Shadim Cabal. Thank you to Daryl Holiday II. Shias Barbarian, we appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Benjamin Sweeney, thank you so much. Many thanks to Lurkin McGinnis. Thank you to Rob Fletcher. And Kevin Brown. Thank you. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Uh, We wouldn't be able to make this show as easily without your assistance. And we truly appreciate your generosity. That's all we have for today's episode. Join us next week when we'll be discussing the process of creating characters in Delta Green, as well as, uh, of course, some great fanfic Mm -hmm. as usual. Until then, stay safe, everyone. Drink some water, relax those shoulders, take some deep breaths, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter. And I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permissions from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero, remixed by Steve Combs, and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guest can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.